Well, hey guys, glad you're here. Glad you're stopping by. Figured I'd hit that record button because I want to talk about video games today. Just one, one in particular. Uh, we may say something about another one, but we haven't beat it yet, so we're not going to talk about it. This isn't necessarily a review as it is just me talking about how I feel about it. So I'm talking about Atomic Heart. You guys may or may not have heard it. I know um, according to analytics, a lot, a lot of people that watch my stuff may not really care about this stuff, but I, I do. I do. Maybe Maybe you'll be interested in this. So Atomic Heart is a game um, that was made by a Russian studio. It already has a red mark right there, and there's going to be a lot of people. It's like, oh, you shouldn't play that game or support the Russians. Um, I'm not here to talk political. I'm really not. I don't want to talk about it. I'm just playing the game because I wanted to play the game. Um, you know, the actual studio that came behind us actually came out and said, hey, we don't stand for what our country is doing to other people. They don't want people to needlessly die uh, over, you know, what's going on. So you can take that as it is, but some people are just going to basically do the thing that they're not supposed to. I know we're supposed to be living in this woke world where we're supposed to care about everybody. Uh, we shouldn't be racist. We shouldn't be sexist. We shouldn't uh, judge people based on where they live. And yet they're saying don't buy this game because Russians made it. And this Russian studio moved to Greece. But they're Russian, so don't buy it. Fuck that. Fuck that. That's stupid, by the way. That's stupid. Um, yeah. yeah. You're not going to get me with this game. You're not going to get me with Hogwarts Legacy, okay? Um, I don't care. I'm going to play the game. I'm going to enjoy myself. I know where I stand. Uh, if you don't like that, then uh, don't play the game. Don't watch the channel. Um it is, it is what it is. I'm not trying to do this out of anger. I'm doing this because I myself like to play games. I like to experience things myself. I don't want to be told what I should and should not enjoy. And I wanted to enjoy this game. It finally came out. And I played through it. Uh, it's about 25 hours, maybe. Um, now, you're probably wondering, is it good? Is it really good? It's good. It's kind of good. It's, it's actually decent. Uh, it's not what I expected. Not what I expected. Um, you can tell right from the beginning of the game. Uh, but let me go ahead and say this. The game, when it opens up, it's pretty damn cool. Uh, pretty neat. Just the visuals, um, just how everything is introduced. It's really neat. Again, it reminds me of Bioshock. Very reminiscent. And you'll play this game, you're going to probably think Bioshock. Uh, very reminiscent of that. Um but the art style is really cool, especially with like the weapons, the boss monsters, uh, some of the other uh, enemies is really neat. I, I think you guys would dig that. Um, but where it falls apart is its story, as well as the main character. They call him P3. Um, I don't want to ruin the game for you, so I'll try not to dive deep into the story. But let's just say this. Um, the further you get in the game the more confusing it gets. It gets more convoluted as it goes. Uh, starts out kind of simple, and again, it gets really stupid. It gets really stupid. And like I said, I've played a lot of games. I've watched a lot of movies. Uh, but this one's pretty pretty disappointing. It had, it had a really great concept. It really did. A really great concept. Uh, the thing that tore it apart, again, was the story. The payoff at the end. And the fact that you have one of the worst main characters in any video game. Well, I, I hear people comparing it to Forso Forspoken, which I'm not going to play Forspoken. I don't care about it. Um, very similar, though. You have uh, a very annoying main character that has a glove or bracelet that talks to you. And they're just rude and they suck to hang out with. Um, they're, they're just bad, bad. In the only bad thing about it is the fact that just like most games that's come out in the last 10 years, um, there's hardly any quiet time. Um, you know, there's always dialogue going. Uh, and like I said, you may know that, notice this. In the last 10 years, uh, every game, they have to make sure any type of quiet spot, there's some kind of dialogue going on. And it wouldn't be bad if the story was good and the characters were likable. 
Um, in, in this case, and I guess the same goes to for spoken. A lot of people said, hey, that's, she's rude. I hate her. She's not fun. Um, and the story's not that great. And that's how I feel about uh, this game. I think I think one of the things they tried to do was make this guy like a cocky American dude, like what they think Americans actually are like, which I guess, <laughs> I guess some cocky alpha males are kind of like. Um, it's just so disappointing that the character was, like I did not enjoy using him. I, I wish I could have shut him up. Um, I wish there was, I don't know if there was or not. There probably was. I know some games allow you to turn down the dialogue. A good example was high on life. It lets you tune down the dialogue because like, like I said, it gets downright annoying for the most part, just hearing the guy bitch. Like you can tell that there was some stuff that was mistranslated, um, especially later on in the game. Uh, some of the conversations don't make sense. Some of the things the characters say don't make sense. Uh, again, it's like somebody trying to cosplay as an American. Um, that's basically what it is. You can tell there are some nuances in uh, Russia, Russian propaganda, communism, stuff like that. That's in this game. That's in this game. Uh, you can definitely tell there are Russian roots. The game does take place in Russia, of course. Uh, a futuristic Russia. Uh, it's a Russia where they won World War II uh, and they're highly advanced. It, I mean, that's that part is cool. You, you'll see what I mean if you play the game. And I think it's... I don't think you should buy the game, honestly. Uh, if you want to buy the game, wait until it's like 25 bucks. Might be the sweet spot for it. Uh, maybe 15 I don't know. Or you could just get Game Pass and play it that way. Uh, that way, you're not wasting your money. Um, I think the gun plays great. The actual uh, music's great because we have Mick Gordon from Doom fame. Uh, if you like Mick Gordon's uh, work on Doom, Doom Eternal, then you'll probably like this. Um, it's, it's it's pretty neat. Um, there's a part in the game that really I appreciated. I don't want to ruin it because... If you do play it, you might come as a surprise, especially if you played other games that I mentioned, like Bioshock or Fallout or something like that. Uh, you'll know exactly what I mean. Uh, the boss fights are really cool. Like the actual designs of the bosses are really neat. Um, the gunplay, like I said, each gun feels great, um, and there's a bunch of weapons uh, you can choose from. Uh, it, the only bad thing about it is uh, ammo is kind of scarce. Believe it or not, I found myself several times running out of ammo and just reverting to my melee stuff, which the melee stuff is pretty cool. It feels chunky. Uh, there are some difficulty spikes, even on like story mode, which I played it on. I, you know, I usually play most of my games on story mode or something like that because I, you know, I have there's a lot of games in my backlog I want to play and I don't want to spend the whole time being fucking miserable, get dying every five seconds. I just want to enjoy the game. I just want to enjoy the story. Now, some games I go back and I play them, and on higher difficulties with friends, like if there's co-op or anything like that. But there's really nothing like that in this game. Um, for some odd reason, for some odd reason in the game, it feels broken. Like, and not just in one spot. It feels like the whole package is broken. Um, the open world probably doesn't exist. Like, it doesn't need to exist. Um, it's From how I played it, it's not really as open as you would think. Um, I kind of felt like it was a larger corridor shooter. Now, you know, you're basically just going from place to place, like uh, some lab to another lab. And the labs are actually pretty cool. Uh, the hospitals, uh, the theaters, uh, stuff like that. Well designed. Um, if you're looking for an art piece, this game definitely has that. Has that. There are some things that happen in the game or some characters in the game that are underutilized. Good example, if you've heard of the game, you may have heard of somebody or a group called the Twins. Uh, they're the sexy robots that the internet is thirsty for. 
they're underutilized in this game, even though just like Lady Dimitres from Resident Evil 8, uh, she they're prominent in the marketing. Um, but near the end, they're underutilized. And they're mysterious, but nothing's really... I mean, there is something said about these special characters. Um, it does kind of come out of left field. Um, it was pretty neat. There are some uh, parts that's like, holy crap, that's crazy in the story. Um, but it's the actual use of them are not that great. Um, it basically becoming bullet sponges and a bullet hell type fight near the end. Um, I wish they would have done more with these characters. I wish they would have done more with this, the whole storytelling, maybe went back to the drawing board, maybe got rid of, uh, our protagonist, which again, he's not fun to play. Like he kind of ruins the whole experience. Just like people are saying with Forspoken, how the main character ruins the experience for them. Now, like I said, you might have a different take on this game. You might like it more than I did. Um, but that's okay. We all like different things. Um, and that's what makes us great. because we like different things. We're different. We like different experiences. And maybe this game is for you. I think at least it's worth one playthrough. Um, I think maybe $15, $25 max, maybe, if you catch it on sale. Or, again, Game Pass, good deal. Uh, great deal if you don't want to pay for a bunch of games, uh, which, you know, it's a subscribe fee, like what, $15, $20 a month. Um, you know, I hear it runs pretty good on PC. Um, it, it runs great on console. I didn't notice a lot. So, I mean... There are some parts where it chugs in the frame rate. Uh, not all the time. It's pretty well made, especially on console. Uh, I haven't played it on PC, so I don't know. But there are some parts in the game uh, that it does chug a little bit. And you're just like, okay, okay. But once you get to the next part, it kind of irons itself out. The main place this happens is when there's more than, I don't know, five or six enemies on screen or... Uh, you're in the open world. Um, you kind of feel like it chugs along a little bit. Um, the open world, again, just... I don't know why why every developer has to have every game that comes out have to have some kind of open world element to it. Um, me, it kind of burns me out on that because, you know, as much as I like open world games, I don't want every game I play to be open world. Uh but yeah, that's that's how I feel about the game. I, I don't want this to go on and on and on. Um, I don't want to spoil the game for you. I just want to say, if you're into this game, kind of game, just check it out. Uh, buy it cheap or buy it on Game Pass. Uh, don't let Twitter or some other, <laughs> other news site or social media say, hey, if you play it, you're, you're, you're against this. Don't follow the message. Enjoy what you want to enjoy. Uh, next, we'll be playing through Hogwarts Legacy, and you guys can send death threats and stuff all you want. I don't care. Playing the game, I've been playing it. It's fun. Um, I don't really care. Uh, but we'll talk about Hogwarts Legacy later on. Guys, I love you very much, and I'll see you soon. Oh, there's a girl called Millie.